Welcome to the Dow Jones Factiva Training and Overview. In this brief video lesson, we will review searching in Factiva's Advanced Search section using the free text search area and Boolean search connectors. The Factiva database consists of over 30,000 sources, with more than half of them being premium licensed content. Over 74% of that is not available on the free web, along with over 13,000 reputable business websites and 4,000 A-list blogs it can be tough to discover the news you need while cutting through the noise. Today we'll take a look at creating customized searches in the free text search box of Factiva. Using Boolean search connectors, we can customize our searches in the free text search area so that our results are more granular and detailed. We will use keywords in our search to look for terms not always in the indexing or in the database. For example, someone's name or a brand name. The articles found will match the language of the text that we enter. Today we're going to look at six examples using connectors and or a proximity locator known as near will allow us to look for two words that are close to each other. We'll also take a look at how to find a keyword displayed in the headline or in the headline and the lead paragraph. Several other examples are available on Factiva, both basic and advanced, by simply clicking on the examples link here. This is our Dow Jones customer support page for search examples. We have both basic search examples showing you how and, or, and not work. And then we have advanced search examples showing at least, near, same, within, and other advanced search techniques, describing how the operator works and providing you with an example in the right-hand column. Let's get started and take a look at how this operates. For this example, I'm going to look for somebody's name. Let's go with Tim Cook, CEO of Apple. Now, I want to know every article that has Tim Cook and the word iPhone. This is a very basic search, and what it will return is every article that comes back will have Tim Cook's name and the word iPhone. They're not going to be in any particular order, and they don't need to be near each other. We'll search the last three months, and as you can see here, we got back 4,000 results. Now, as we mentioned in the previous video with intelligent indexing, every one of these articles has been tagged on the back end by our intelligent indexing metadata. We can use the discovery pane on the left-hand side to further sort these results and get more granular. For example, when I'm looking up Tim Cook and iPhone, I may only want to know what recent articles are speaking about sales figures of the iPhone. So under the subject, I'll see here sales figures. We can click on this and filter out all the articles that have been tagged as being about sales figures. As you can see here, they're speaking about revenue, quarterly, and other sales-related topics around the iPhone. Let's go back and modify our search by clicking in the top right area, Modify Search. I'll remove that specific subject that I filtered by clicking on the yellow bubble down below and choosing Remove. You can also combine your free text keyword searching with the intelligent indexing tags down below. For instance, I may want Tim Cook and iPhone to be pulled back in my results, but I only want results of articles that have been tagged by our system as being Apple. So in this instance, I'll type the word Apple. So here I know that every article that's coming back has been tagged by our system as being Apple related. I can modify the search and change the industry or add a subject or add an industry. Perhaps I only want news that's coming out of North America or the United States. And I only want the industry to be with it tagged as smartphones. So now I have combined my keywords of iPhone and Tim Cook, and the articles that are being pulled back are already tagged with Apple, they're tagged with the industry smartphones, and they're only coming from the United States. So now I've narrowed down from the 4,000 earlier to 838 articles, but I know that these are much more granular and much more specific as they've been tagged with Apple, tagged with an industry, and tagged with a region of the United States. So that's an example of combining free text with tags and metadata. Now, for instance, I may want to look up Tim Cook and any mention of the iPhone or the iPad. In this instance, I'll use the connector OR and add iPad. 
but because we're telling the system that we want it to separately look for articles with iPhone or iPad and then connect that operation to the name Tim Cook, we have to put the iPhone and the iPad in brackets. This makes it a separate operator. So now what the system is doing is going to search all the articles for iPhone or iPad. It'll find those articles and then it will weed out the articles that have Tim Cook because we're asking for Tim Cook and the iPhone or the iPad to be mentioned. It can come in any particular order and they could all three be mentioned at the same time or one of the iPhone or iPad along with Tim Cook's name. Let's run that search now. Remember before we got 4,000 results. Now that we've added the iPad, only in about another 100 results showed up with 4,147 results. Again, we can use the discovery pane on the left-hand side to sort through. Now, I may be interested in this case only seeing new products and services, so I'll click on that filter to weed out those 360 articles. Again, when you filter down and find specific things that you're looking for, you can always save the search so you could go back and visit it later, or you could create an alert out of this so that the content is pushed to your email. In the next video, we'll be looking at how to create alerts and how to control them, edit them, delete them, share them, and more. For now, let's go back and modify the search. We're now going to take a look at using a near connector or a proximity connector. Remember, when we searched Tim Cook and iPhone, we got back 4,000 results. In this instance, I'm going to use the term near and state how many words I want between Tim Cook and the word iPhone. In this case, I'll set it to 10. The system will now pull back every article in the Factiva database that has Tim Cook within 10 words of the word iPhone. You can see here now that before it was around 4,000 results. Now it's down to about 119 results. There are 119 articles where Tim Cook's name appears within 10 words of the word iPhone. I'm going to go back and show a more pointed example here using Tesla and batteries. If I run a search for Tesla and battery, I'm going to pull back in the last three months 6,799 results. But this doesn't necessarily mean that the articles are speaking about Tesla's battery. It could have Tesla in the beginning speaking about owners of Tesla cars and somewhere later on down in the article they mention the word battery. But if I modify the search and change that to near for a proximity locator, I'll keep it very close at five. I want Tesla to be within five words of the word battery. Now I'll run the search and you'll see how much the results change. Again, you're speaking about Tesla's battery packs, Tesla's battery performance, you can see here that they're talking about their battery storage. You can see that using the near connector and creating proximity between two keywords or a person's name or a company and a keyword will start forming a theme within your results. Let's go back and modify the search. I now want to take a look at the at least operator. At least is an important operator because it tells the system I want at least X amount of mentions of a specific keyword. This can help because there's a lot of articles out there that may be talking about something completely off topic from, for example, the iPhone. But at the very end of the article, it's mentioned of iPhone. Uh, it could have been that an iPhone was belonged to a person in the article, or iPhone sponsored a 5K race over the weekend, or a charity event, or whatever. Uh, in that case, the article would come back, but it has nothing really to do with the iPhone. So for example, I'm going to just search the word iPhone in the last three months and click search. We're going to get back an enormous amount of results here. Obviously, 78,500 results have the word iPhone. But if I go back and modify this search and tell the system at least, all one word, and the number three, I'm telling the system I want at least three mentions of the iPhone in that article. Now I'm going to run the search, and we'll have gone from 78,000 down to 19,000. The chances are that the iPhone is being mentioned multiple times means that the article is more about the iPhone. And we have two more operator examples I want to point out. One is headline and one is headline and lead paragraph. 
What that means is that you type HD equals iPhone or your keyword. And you run a search and it will pull back every article that has the word iPhone in the headline. If the, he if the headline does not consist of iPhone, if iPhone is not in the headline, it will not return a result. You can see here that every result of mine has iPhone highlighted. Let's go back and modify the search. Perhaps you want to know more than just the headline, perhaps in the first paragraph, not necessarily the headline. That's HLP equals, for headline or lead paragraph, iPhone. You can see here we get a lot more examples now, 28,000 results, where iPhone is mentioned, perhaps not in the headline, but in the first paragraph. Again, keeping a theme of the article most likely to be in line with an iPhone. You'll notice in my examples today that my keywords have been highlighted when I type any free text. Here, for instance, iPhone is, is continually highlighted throughout my articles. You can do this by going to your gear on the top right choosing the settings in your drop down menu and preferences in preferences you'll see headlines and results i have my lead sentence style set to contextual which means it will take the sentence within an article that has my keyword and display that rather than the first sentence of the article that way i can scroll through my results and see how my keywords were being used and that way i can determine if i want to click through and read the article Two more sections down, we have highlight sections in terms of document. This I have selected as yes, because what it will do is highlight my keywords. So again, as you can see, when I scroll through, the highlights of the iPhone are mentioned, and they pull the first sentence that available with the iPhone in it up to the top, so it's contextual results. Again, you can go to the examples link in underneath the free text search area in the advanced searching and click on examples to look through the basic and advanced search tips. You can also go to the Spark portal and look under the Factiva user group and pull up Factiva usage guide getting started searching and alerting PDF. This will give you a full rundown. We also have videos available. You can call Dow Jones client service numbers are available also in the Spark portal. And again, we have live help on the top left here. By clicking on live help, it'll pull up an automatic customer service box that runs 24 hours a day. You may also reach out to the contacts here at Dow Jones that are listed in your Spark portal under Factiva if you wish to set up a deeper dive or one-on-one -on -one session to learn more about using Factiva's advanced search functionality or any of the other options we have here. Thank you and have a good day.